Hey, I'm Kobold DM, D&D 5th Edition Dungeon Master and Creator. I'm the kind of DM that really loves to create an immersive experience for my players, so when the Kobolds of the Brightbound ventured onto the seas, I decided that I could make something truly spectacular for them to experience. This here's a pirate ship, beset by a storm in the middle of the night. It trudges slowly through the turbulent waters as lightning cracks on all sides. You might be wondering how something like this is even possible in a virtual tabletop. Well, it's certainly not possible in Roll20, but uh, Foundry VTT is what makes it all possible, as well as a suite of independently made mods that add extra functionality to an already excellent application. There are a few modules that you'll need to add to your game to create a scene like this. Parallaxia makes the world move, Soundboard by Blitz provides the thunder effect, Community Lighting by Blitz provides extra lighting effects, and FX Master is just something you'll want to grab to give a lot more options in terms of weather. Now let's get started with tiles. Tiles are an essential aspect of making a moving, breathing scene. The tile that'll be moving is the ocean itself, underneath the ship. So grab any blank ocean battle map you can find, put it down in the space, and try filling out the whole scene with the original drag out. Once you've got the tile set down, right click it and, if you have your modules activated, you should see this option here for parallaxing the tile. If not, check your module settings, they aren't automatically activated upon download. You should see your tile begin to move immediately, but something probably isn't right. You'll need to play with the size settings found here to refit the parallax effect to the scene. It should end up looking something like this. Also, as a quick note, if you see a blinking line on the edges, you need to uncheck this box, as well as your players. The next step is to add a ship as a tile. This time, however, the ship itself needs to be cut out of its original image and then made to have a transparent background. You can easily do this in Photoshop or any other program that can crop out an image in detail. Uh, here's a speedy little walkthrough of using Photoshop to do it. Import the image, grab the magic selector wand thingy, select the ship, remember to invert your selection by right clicking, then go to the eraser, make sure it's big and hard, and click. Shave down the image so that it has no extra spacing on the margins, and you're done. Now that you've got an image, import it as a tile. It'll probably be squished, so play around with the settings until it looks right. Next, throw down some walls, doors, and windows to finalize the scene. Maybe add out some lighting for the lanterns here. Now that the scene's set, we can start adding the lightning. Let's turn down the lights and add some rain. Pop in some ambient rain sounds, which you can find easily on the modules list. I personally use Michael Gaiofi's. With the scene set, let's bring in the storm. Pop down a light effect and browse the effects panel. You should see one called Audio Pulse. Basically, it activates the lighting animation based on the range of the audio. You should also set the connection to soundboard. For lightning, you'll want to make the bright range 5,000 feet and the dim range zero, so that there's no perceptible fading bubble of light. This way, it's a simple fade, the way something going at light speed should look. Pump the intensity to 100, as well as the speed, and change the audio range to high so that the brightest flash only occurs at the highest intensity of strikes. Now we're ready for the sound. You'll find it in the audio section here. Uh, open up this module. It should be four boxes. You'll see plenty of sounds here. You can test them out with a click. But what you'll want to do is go to the thunder, click these dots, and set it to a timer. You won't see it instantly happen, but if you wait, you should see a flash when the effect fires. Because of how these mods work, the sound must be turned up for the lightning to also work. So if your players don't see lightning, tell them to up their audio. For whatever reason, the lightning will have this yellowish hue for the first three times it's activated, but just wait and it'll turn into a beautiful white. There you have it. A fully dynamic ship in a storm. Please like and subscribe, I'll probably be making more tutorials and edits of scenes, so if you want to see more, just make sure to subscribe.